All right, guys, I just want to welcome back to the Everything College World Podcast. Today, me and Nick here will be doing our preview and prediction for the 2023 ACC Championship game. FSU favored by three. Total is 51. 8 p.m. Eastern time on ABC Live from Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, Louisville. Looking for a near six bid while Florida State is still trying to stay in the playoff race. Looking at that Cardinal offense, Jack Plummer, you know, this is a guy expected to come into Jeff Brum's system with his previous experience at Purdue and really light things up. And I think for the most part, he's had a good year. You know, what about less than 3,000 yards passing, 21 touchdowns, has 11 interceptions. And that's certainly been the biggest issue with him, Nick. You know, an interception each of the last three games. Completion rating has certainly been a lot better over the last month. Uh, but there's times where his accuracy is not all that great in the intermediate to deep range. Um, you know, he certainly puts a little bit too much heat on the ball at times. Um, a lot of mistakes when you probably shouldn't um, and you certainly wouldn't expect them on high percentage opportunities. And I think that's bit Plummer's biggest flaw this year. Certainly, again, he's a good leader for the system, though, has been productive. Um, and again, he's completing a much higher clip. And he does have, you know, seven touchdowns with those three interceptions over the last three weeks. So he's playing some of his best ball of the year, I would say. But some of these turnovers can certainly plague them, especially against a great defense. Looking for a lot of opportunities with a backup quarterback. Louisville certainly the story of the year in terms of overachieving expectations under first-year head coach Jeff Brom. They had to make a move. They were kind of stale under Scott Satterfield. They make a move, and now Brom looks like the great hire, and this team has been fantastic. We thought Plummer would, would jump in and be an absolute star in this system. He's been very steady, disappointing at times, but still a solid quarterback for this system and a good player for Brom so far. 66% completion percentage, 3,000 yards passing, 21 touchdowns, 11 picks. Obviously, 11 picks is the big story when you have a team like you said with a backup quarterback they want to do everything they can to get advantages and, and the turnover game is going to be where they can try and get their big advantages and try and pick Plummer off once or twice Plummer though looks good most of the time when he's composed and keeps the pace of the ball slow down a little bit he can get the throws and complete into tight spaces a very talented quarterback a good player in the system an exciting player to watch a nice veteran leadership guy here good coming into an ACC title game at a neutral site you want to have a guy like that who's a veteran leader who's been around the game it was tough loss this past weekend against kentucky they want to hopefully shake that off and spoil you know the acc's bid for the playoff as the work with is a very good one they certainly haven't been productive uh you know like i thought they would be jamari thrash though having a great year 801 yards six touchdowns and 56 grabs leads the team in all those categories chris bell he's emerged as that number two kevin coleman only 22 grabs for 321 Mari Huggins Bruce, he's a guy that has four touchdowns, 305 yards. Jimmy Callaway, he also has plenty of speed. I mean, there's some great weapons here in this receiving core. Um, and again, the production hasn't been all that great, but there's plenty of you know, opportunities here for these guys. And in the run game, you know, it certainly has never really been a big point of Jeff Brom's offense. He kind of wondered what they would do this year with having some talented backs. And, you know, they certainly went away from what their system usually suggests, you know, 38 attempts per game for this attack. Jawar Jordan over a thousand yards, 13 touchdowns. He's been great as a receiver as well, 225. Averages over 100 yards per contest. And as Isaac Garendo wasn't all that good for Wisconsin, but he's really stepped up and you know brought that attitude with him to the ACC. 639, eight touchdowns over six yards per carry. Uh, you know some nice physicality from him, hard running, and he certainly has earned a lot of more touches over the second half of this season. What do you make of the supporting cast, Nick? Because when we talk. Back in August, we felt that they were going to be pretty good from that standpoint. I think they've certainly delivered the production out wide. It hasn't been as great, but the threat is certainly there, and the run game has been phenomenal. The threat is there out wide, and this is a solid offense top to bottom. A good supporting cast. They would You'd like to see them be a little bit better, but overall, I think it's been good numbers. Samari Thrash, 800 yards receiving, 14.3 yards for grab, six scores for him. Chris Bell, 381. 15.2 yards per grab, two scores. Kevin Coleman, 321, 14.6, and two scores for him. Amari Huggins, Bruce has been solid as well, 305, 16.1, and four scores for him. Jimmy Callaway looks good, 234, 12.3. Jamar Jordan's also involved in the passing game, 225, 12.5, and one score for him. Then you look at the running game, Jamar jo Jahar Jordan has been fantastic for this team, 1,000 yards on the ground. 13 touchdowns for him. Fantastic numbers. Isaiah Guerrero as well. 639, 6.1 yards per carry and eight scores for him. I think the production is solid on the ground. 4.85 yards per attempt on the ground. Solid numbers. 27 rushing touchdowns. 3,000 yards passing, 155 passer rating. That's a, bit, a little bit low if you look at that. 22 touchdowns, 11 interceptions like we talked about. Total offense, 6.57 yards per play. Good numbers from this offense. This is a nice, exciting unit that can put up points. Yeah, the offensive line's been, you know, a bit of an average unit. 
Led by a star at center and Brian Hudson. He's been terrific this season. At left tackle, Willie Tyler has allowed a couple of sacks. Um, none for the right tackle, Eric Miller. But he gives up a great amount of pressures. The interior, overall, pretty good. Uh, you know, Michael Gonzalez, he's pretty good uh, at paving ways for this ground game. So uh, average offensive line, tough task in front of them. They're not overwhelming by any means, but they're not a liability either. Glancing at the Florida State offense, obviously a lot of things have changed now with Jordan Travis's awful, untimely injury. Given the keys to Tate Rodmaker, they go on the road against Florida, and he wasn't all that great. He completed, you know, 12 passes on 25 attempts for a buck 34. No picks, no touchdowns, five and a half yards per attempt. And he was able to make some good throws on third down. Serena was able to get out into the boundary as well. Um, you know, this is big for them because they're now going looking at four conversions each the last two games. Their third down offense has certainly struggled a good bit. All of a sudden, um, they weren't all that great against Miami, even with. Travis, you know, this is not good for Florida State yet because the offense they played against the a Florida defense they got absolutely torched in the five or six games prior to, you know, hosting the Seminoles. And they only put up 224 yards of offense, less than four yards uh, per play. Um, and this is a supporting cast. I thought we really step up and do more than that. Trey Benson, I think, certainly did his part. Three touchdowns on with 95 yards, five yards per attempt for him. Really having, you know, tough earned yards, though. Up to 14 scores on the year. Lawrence Tafai as well, a guy that saw a couple of touches. Um, more importantly, these receivers are going to have to be big. Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, they seem to be finally fully healthy together. Jaheim Bell, Kyle Morlock, and you have three receivers of over 500 yards. Wilson, a strong physical player. Coleman as well. Not as strong, but he's also physical, really good in traffic. Uh, Wilson, though, is a guy they love to throw it up to. Uh, he only has two touchdowns compared to Coleman's 11. Um, this is a great duo, Nick, one of the best in the country. Um, but not having Travis, having Rodmaker here. They certainly aren't playing in the swamp by any means on Saturday. Neutral slight should certainly be more beneficial for them. But on the field, the same is the same. The supporting cast is going to continue to elevate. Um, I, they passed the test and won on the road against the Gators, but um, it seems like they're going to continue the trend probably in the wrong direction. They did pass a test uh, in a hostile environment in the swamp. Very tough place to play. They got the job done. They won the game. Rodmaker, 12 of 25, the 134. He did what he had to do. He's just going to be, a, you know, sort of a game manager at this point. You don't expect him to be lights out. It's going to rely on Benson and the rest of the running back room to be the big guys to carry the load here. They're going to have to rely on that. 38.8 points per game prior to the injury. Good numbers. You know, the rushing attempts, 4.77 uh, yards per attempt. Good number there. They're going to rely on that 31 uh, scores on the ground. It's going to have to be what they go for here. They're going to have to just run the ball against this Louisville defense. That's going to be the really the key to success at this point. Trey Benson, 838, 6.1 and 14 scores for him. Lawrence to Foley, 345, 5.8 yards per attempt and three scores for him rodney hill chaziah holmes will be involved as well they're gonna have to run the ball a whole lot here it is nice that rod maker has a very nice duo to throw to and coleman and wilson you know your two stars at the wide receiving position for this team 639 for coleman 13.9 yards per grab 11 scores for the former uh michigan state uh michigan state spartan that is johnny wilson 596 15 point three and two scores for him Shaheem bell hasn't been as good a tight end as we hoped he would be after coming over from south carolina but he's still a good blocking tight end 500 yards for him 12.9 yards for grab two scores the rest of the team you know trey benson has been good out of the backfield receiving kyle morlock jacal douglas as well so they do have a very deep wide receiving room it's going to be a lot on the running backs though in my opinion because you just you can't really trust rod maker in this situation and you know i all props to him for stepping into a tough situation and getting the job done on the road at florida but i just cannot trust him in this situation i think they're gonna have to run the ball a whole lot they want to have success yeah behind a pretty stout offensive line bless harris at left tackle has been a great pass blocker of this season for them you know left guard casey rodder would come over from colorado has been a pretty above average player uh, Maurice Smith, a veteran center. Uh, you know, look on the right side, Dimitri Emmanuel has been good for them as a guard, especially in pass protection. And then when you're looking at right tackle, uh, Jeremiah Byers has certainly struggled a bit in his conversion uh, coming over from UTEP. So the offensive line, pretty good unit. I would say pass protection is going to have to be great. And like you said, even better in the trenches when it comes to slowing down the run. Looking at the Louisville defense, this is a unit that certainly has been a lot better than we anticipated this season. Only giving up, you know, 20 points per game. And they were phenomenal last year. Led the nation in sacks. And, you know, they obviously lost a lot of talent. Um, but the defensive line has been a lot better than we expected. We knew Ashton Gelati was one of the returning veterans from last year. 11 sacks this year. He's been phenomenal. His tackle for loss number as well, 14 and a half. One of the better players in the conference. Mason Ryger has been a hard physical player. Roman Pierre per year has also been a nice, effective lineman. Jared Dawson 
and then Desmond Till. Uh, tell that is. Uh, it's been a good unit for Louisville mainly because what they've been able to do in the trenches with some of the names I left, you know, read off, including Jeff Clark, another uh, standout for them, Jeremiah Lowell. He's been around for a long time, the Arizona State transfer, but, you know, they certainly have not really folded that much against the run this year. They have not allowed more than 180 yards in a contest this season. They've been stout in conference. You know, they held Duke to zero points and 51 rushing yards. That's really the staple of their offense with no Riley Leonard. Notre Dame only had 44. Um, you know, Pittsburgh was held to less than 90. I mean, these are legit numbers, Nick. Obviously, Miami was able to rip off some big runs kind of there in a desperation mode for them a couple weeks ago in a home game. They had a buck 59 and three scores. That's it, though. That's the only time this year they've allowed more than five yards per carry. This run defense is legit. And, you know, it's been impressive to see some of these younger guys step up around Ashton Jelotti. This is a very impressive run defense. 20 points per game given up is the total 3.26 yards per attempt on the ground. Solid numbers if you're a Cardinal fan. This defense, we knew this defense could be good. We didn't know how exactly good they would be replacing a whole lot of talent that left last year. That defense was very solid. You know, those a remnant of the Satterfield era where they were able to have a efficient defense. Brahm inherited what was a good defense at its core, but it definitely performed better than I imagined. Gelati, like you said, he's the guy leading the way. 43 total tackles, 14 and a half tackles, lost 11 sacks. Good number. Numbers, Stefan Haran, 26 total tackles, two and a half tackles for loss. Raymond Perrier, 19 total tackles, five tackles for loss, three sacks for him. Desmond Tell, 18 total tackles, four tackles for loss, two sacks. Mason Riger, 16, six and five for him. Good numbers. Jeffrey Clark, 13, two and two tackles for loss for him. Jared Dawson, 10 tackles, three tackles for loss, two and a half sacks and limited appearances. Good numbers across this board for this front uh, defensive part of this unit. Very physical, strong, hard-hitting part of this unit. The middle is also not too bad as well. Yeah, they certainly have some good players. Antonio Watts has been a nice tackler. Good run defender for them at linebacker. TJ Quinn, though, he's been the leader. He's been a nice, solid player for them. This is probably one of the weaker spots on this team is this linebacking core. We talked about in the preseason how they didn't really have a lot of depth. Jalen Alderman, he's really stepped up, though, as the fourth leading tackler. Um, and they're just playing sound, disciplined football from the middle here. Uh, you know, they're not the most talented of bunches, but they really complement the Steve line well. And you look at the secondary, you know, this is a really strong point for this football team. Gave up some big plays to Kentucky. Uh, Miami was able to really pick them apart. Virginia as well. Um, so they've certainly really struggled over the last three games here. Uh, before that, you know, they absolutely routed everybody else. Notre Dame was held in check. I think they ended up picking off Hartman, what, three times in that game. Um, and they've not been tested all that much. You know, Virginia Tech, they beat them by 31 points. That offense has been really clicking, held them to 140 yards of total O there. Um, this is a really good part of this football team coming into the year. I was very happy with the duo of Jarvis Brownlee and Quincy Riley out there at corner. Um, the Brownlee, yeah, I know he's been really beat up, so certainly want to continue to monitor his health status. But he did play a bit against Kentucky there. Um, this is a player they certainly want on the field to defend Coleman and Johnny Wilson. And, you know, look at Devin Neal, a transfer from safety. Benjamin Perry, uh, a veteran on this roster. I mean, his safety's been playing very sound. It's probably uh, a point where you can probably expose them between the numbers and downfield. But when it comes to locking up outside in terms of man coverage, pretty happy with what they have. 12 interceptions on the year. Neal with four of them. Cameron Kelly, another transfer, has a couple in his own right. So they have guys who are making a lot of plays on the ball. You know, Storm Duck, he's a veteran who's also around. Uh, you know, a transfer they picked up from UNC. Um, I like what they have. I mean, there's some nice talent in the secondary neck, and I think with a young quarterback, they're certainly going to look to try and bait and switch on him as much as they can. They do certainly have a nice secondary that has some solid production pieces. TJ Quinn been solid for this team. I like what I've seen out of him at, at wide linebacker. Really good player. 76 total tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, one pick, two, two pass breakups. Cameron Kelly, 63 total tackles, four tackles for loss, two picks. Two pass breakups, Devin Neal, 62-3. Four interceptions, six pass breakups. Jalen Alderman's been pretty good, 52 total tackles. Perry's also got 52 total tackles, six and a half tackles for loss. Three pass breakups, Quincy Riley, 44. Eight pass breakups, two interceptions. Storm Duck, seven pass breakups, 30 total tackles. He's trying to improve his career after some bad stops throughout college football. Antonio Watts, 27 total tackles, six tackles for loss for him good numbers from this cardinal defense they're a physical unit that hits hard they're solid in the secondary and now they're going to try and uh, prey on a, on a, a inexperienced quarterback who's stepping into the big spotlight again they can get a turnover too it could certainly help out this cardinal offense yeah looking at the part of the florida state team it's going to be really dependent on what happens here and a potential lead in the playoffs i mean this is a very sound unit it starts with their defensive line that is incredibly sound they have plenty of nice options as well led by fabian lovett braden fisky you know the western michigan transfer he's been phenomenal for this football team you know, you know jared verse obviously hasn't been as productive as you envisioned but still nine and a half tfl 
Patrick Payton, you know, a true sophomore, has really emerged after a big season uh, last fall. Joshua Farmer, another one of those guys who's really big up front, 6'3", 3'11". I mean, they have some nice run stoppers here. Not always do they show that, though. They certainly had some issues this year in terms of giving up big plays. Um, but they also have only had one game of 200-plus yards allowed. They're typically in that, you know, 130-yard per game mark, you know, about 140 per game total, one, uh, you know, 3.9 yards per carry. So they certainly are polished. They're not, you know, a Georgia by any means, but they're certainly trending in the right direction. It's certainly helpful. You have three linebackers who are incredible. You know, Kalen Deloach is great. DJ Lundy, he is a hard hitter. Tatum Athune, he's a you know productive veteran they picked up a couple of seasons ago from an inter- interstate school. Uh, you know, so they have some nice linebackers here that are great playmakers. The team has 38 sacks. It's one of the higher marks in the nation. They get production from anybody um, in this front seven. And they're going to be tasked with slowing down this, you know, balanced attack that has an explosive running game. And they certainly want to try and put pressure on a quarterback that's prone to make some mistakes. They certainly want to put pressure on a quarterback who's been prone to make mistakes. This is a good defense. This Florida State team has 16.8 points per game given up. They're solid on the ground, 3.93 yards per attempt, 12 rushing touchdowns given up. Solid numbers. They're good against the pass as well. This is a physical front seven. We raved about them in the preseason because they do have incredibly talented players who can get after the quarterback. You know you know who you're talking about here at Florida State. These are guys that are just incredibly talented, top to bottom. Patrick Payton, Braden Fiske, Joshua Farmer, Jared Verse, all incredible players for this team you know disappointing for some of them but some of them are still producing you know first 35 total tackles Peyton 35 total tackles versus nine and a half tackles for loss seven sacks Peyton 11 and a half tackles for loss five sacks for him Fiske 34 total tackles four and a half tackles for loss three sacks good numbers Joshua Farmer 31 total tackles six and a half tackles for loss five sacks this is a very dominant physical unit that's going to look to try to overpower this Louisville offensive line yeah, and you look at the secondary, Jerry and Jones having an elite season in the slot. Renardo Green at one of those cornerback possessions is very good. Central Cypress hasn't been as great. Uh, you know, his area, Thomas hasn't been that stout either. I certainly think the safety positions are, you know, a bit of a weaker spot on this defense. I mean, they didn't crack versus Florida, though. You know, they certainly have some young, talented receivers there. They also had a bit of a backup quarterback. Shaheen Brown, those really developed this season. I think Akeem Denton has also been a pretty good playmaker. Kevin Knowles as well. Neither of those two guys are really all that straight in coverage, though. Uh, so I certainly think that's an opportunity between the numbers to take advantage of Florida State. If there's going to be one area, it's going to be there. Um, the second area, though, has been very good. You know, back-to-back games allowing less than 90 yards, certainly not the greatest of opponents, but they certainly held Florida, uh, uh, Miami in check, 33% completion rate. They lead the nation in opponent completion rate, 47.6%. Nobody has, you know, completed more than 57% on them since, you know, the early part of September. Um, they've been very stout this year, Nick. They don't allow efficiency one bit, and that's kind of what this, you know, pro-style uh, air raid attack from Louisville possesses. You know, high percentage throws, nice completions. They have nine interceptions, the eight picks, or eight touchdowns, that is. Um, they've had an interception each of the last four games. And again, this year, they haven't really faced the greatest of passing attacks. Um, But regardless, you still got to go out there and prove it. Clemson was able to spark some big plays. For the most part, though, they really completely stifled opponents. So what do you think is in store here for Florida State? Probably the second best passing attack they've seen all season, all the way back in week one. They saw LSU. So, you know, what do you think is in store here for a team that must have a great day through the air? They certainly have to have a great day through the air. They have not played amazing passing attacks, like you said. Passer ratings about 100 for their opponents. Nine interceptions to eight touchdowns. You know, that's, those are really good numbers, but it has been kind of a weak slate so far this year. Renato Green, 43 total tackles, one pick, 10 pass breakups. Very good numbers from him. I like those pass breakups, certainly. Azarian Thomas, 20 total tackles, eight pass breakups. Sharon Jones, three picks, three pass breakups, five tackles for loss, 24 total tackles. Kalen Deloach, been solid as well for this team. This is a team that has some good players. You know, Deloach at linebacker, of course, but he leads the team with 63 total tackles. I think the secondary will have a good day against the Cardinals here, but this is definitely a tough matchup. Louisville can certainly have an opportunity to pick this team apart with their high-flying, uh, high-powered offense. Looking well, at the team comparisons, I think there's a clear edge at quarterback now with Jack Plummer, the veteran over a young quarterback in Tate Rodmaker. Running back, I like that duo of Louisville, Jordan and Garendo, a little bit more than Tufali and the impressive Trey Benson. Other than that, though, I'm going to give the edges all the way to the Knowles. I think they're a little bit better at the pass-catching positions, even though Louisville, they're pretty deep in their own right. Offensive front, giving it to FSU, D-line. I think, again, Louisville's been very impressive on the trenches this season, especially on that side of the ball. Um, But I think Florida State, clearly one of the top D-lines in the country. Linebacker, big-time edge there. I think in the secondary as well. Louisville has guys I think will certainly be able to win on the outside. But in terms of just playing, you know, cohesive ball, 
complimentary ball in the back end. Florida State's done that all year long, so it's got to be an advantage for them. What do you think about this, Nick? Do you think that the running back position should be flipped? I think this is a fair comparison. I think it's close on the running back position. I think quarterback definitely goes, obviously, to plumber. The rest of it goes to Florida State with pretty much ease. You, know, you can maybe make the case for linebacker potentially going to Louisville. They have been a good unit. Or the defensive line going to Louisville as well. They've been a very solid unit. But overall, I think this is fair. Running back, I think, does belong to the Cardinals with the way they're able to produce. But if these Florida State running backs are at full potential, they're definitely a very scary unit and could really torch this defense for the Cardinals. One of the final thoughts here on the prediction for the Louisville collapse the run, put pressure on the young quarterback, feed Jawar Jordan for Florida State. You got to pound the rock. This defensive line must continue the feast. Kind of like the Florida game, I said I'm going to take FSU by a couple points, but I'm not really sure what to expect. And here, I'm still really not sure what to expect because Louisville, they just completely, you know, you know, did not look good against Kentucky. I mean, I guess they were good on offense, but the defense completely failed them there. Lost that rivalry game at home. Pretty embarrassing as eight-point favorites. I'm going to take the Cardinal in this one, though, after you know only 230-some yards against the Gators. The defense, again, it was getting absolutely clubbed. I don't see how they're going to all of a sudden show up and be better against the defense that's better, Nick. I know it's at a neutral site, uh, but, again, at the end of the day, you're still going to you know play on the field you're playing. Louisville, I think, is going to have too many opportunities to not score. I know they're playing a great defense, but I know they have nice talent and good weapons as well. They think they'll certainly be difference makers. I think Florida State's just going to be stagnant on offense for most of the game. Um, I guess I'll pick them to put, tw- put up 21 on the board. 28-21 final for me. I'm going to take Louisville outright as the underdogs. I'm not all that confident in it because this FSU defense is great. But, man, this is really just a toss-up season on the line for the Knowles. I'm not confident either. Of course, you know, a win for Louisville would do a lot for me as an Alabama fan, assuming Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC title game. This is very close. you, you got to keep your eyes on this one. I do have Florida State scoring 35 points, but I think the defense will get a turnover or two to set them up in good field position, maybe even score a defensive touchdown. I like this to be a competitive game. I think both teams will have good days on offense. I think Rod Maker will have a good day despite being inexperienced. This is a tough one to predict, though. Like you said, it's a complete toss-up. I, You know, this is one that I went back and forth on. I really didn't know where I wanted to go. You want to Cardinal, I'll go with Florida State to play devil's advocate, I guess. Florida State, I think they get deserve to be in the playoff if they do win this game. I think you can't leave out an unbeaten Power 5 conference champion. I just don't think that makes any sense, in my opinion. I know the injuries are Sunday consider, but you got to get this happen. We've seen in the past, Ohio State had a third-string quarterback, and they went on to win a national championship, so you really never know. I think you have to let Louisville, or you have to let Florida State in if they do win this game. Deflating loss last week for Louisville at home against Kentucky to lose the Governor's Cup, so I think that will certainly play a low, play in a role for them as well as they kind of just coast their way into bowl season. And then what was a really promising season for Jeff Brom that's kind of just going to end on a disappointing note. Yeah, go ahead and take the Cardinals and the FSU defense has been probably giving up some big plays at times. Uh, strength of schedule might creep into the factor here. So I think Florida State definitely wants to win this one by double figures. I don't think to win the game at all, but we'll see what happens next. Should be an interesting one. I appreciate you joining me. Absolutely. Looking forward to this great matchup. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. I don't think Florida State gets in if they lose. Sorry.